I'm your host, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Let's begin. Uh, knowledge and information is the forerunner to experience. Nelson Mandela, for all those years, saying, I'm never going to get out of here, I'm never going to get out of here. I mean, that was his mantra, and then finally he said, what if I could get out of here? How, how could I get out of here? He started thinking, how could I get out of here? He started thinking in a creative way. I'll start writing letters, I'll start doing this, I'll start drawing attention to, the, to really what's going on in South Africa. And then he started saying, who's going to lead this nation? Who's going to, and then he, what if I could lead this nation? And then he started believing in that. I mean, um, and a belief is just a thought you keep thinking over and over again until you hardwire it in your brain. And, and so we're all faced with uh, great challenges brilliantly disguised as impossible situations. And <clears throat> there's always a door. There is always a door. And so your personality creates your personal reality. It's that simple. And your personality is made up of how you think, how you act, and how you feel. So the present personality who's listening to this show has created the present personal reality called their life. Which means if you're going to change something in your personal reality in your life, you got to change your personality. You have to change. Nothing changes until you change. That's the bottom line. So then <clears throat> the word meditation literally means to become familiar with. That's what that symbol means, to become familiar with. So the inmate is sitting there and he's starting his or her you know, journey on the process of meditation. And here comes the thoughts. I can't, I'll never change. I wanna kill this person. This person turned me in, I'm angry. And here comes the barrage of the thoughts, the habits and behaviors and the emotions. Now, most people, the moment that happens, they don't want to look anymore. They get up, they start getting busy, they get on their cell phone, they do this at working out, whatever they do to distract them from that feeling. But great courage. <laughs> the greatest courage is to look at that because when you can become so familiar, Fritzy, with that thought, so conscious of that unconscious thought that has been slipping by your awareness unnoticed, to the point where you can say, oh, you can recognize the thought and you don't accept it, you don't believe it, you don't surrender to it without analyzing, you're aware of it. Now that's a victory. But because in your waking day, that thought, if you become so familiar with it, is going to be con you're going to become conscious of it. And a program is when you're unconscious. So as you keep remembering enough times, how many times do we have to remember before we stop forgetting? That's the process of change. And if it takes a thousand times of trial and error and you're persistent, sooner or later, you're going to be like, I'm not going to believe in that thought anymore. By the same means, if you complain and you blame and you make excuses and you feel sorry for yourself and you talk trash about other people, don't you know that in order to create a new personality, you have to become so conscious of those unconscious, even the way you speak and the way you act, that you wouldn't go unconscious to that state again. Now, here's the hardest part. When the body starts getting aroused and starts feeling anxiety and fear and starts feeling anger and hatred and frustration and wants to be violent and feels pain and suffering and guilt and shame, this is great courage. If you could settle the body back down into the present moment and teach it that it's no longer the mind, if you keep doing that, in time you will sense the first sensation in your body that starts the emotional response. You'll get so familiar with that emotional response that you'll catch it before it happens. Now, that is retiring the old self. Nerve cells that no longer fire together, no longer wire together. And you start pruning apart circuitry in your brain that has to do with memories of the past. By the same means, if you're no longer behaving the same way, you're no longer lighting those circuits up as well. And if you can stop the thought that produces the feeling of that emotion and inhibit the process, inhibition over time breaks conditioning. So how long does it have to take? Well, you practice doing it with your eyes closed so that when you open your eyes, you don't go back to the old personality. Now, here's the cool part. What if you sat there and you said, what thoughts do I want to fire and wire in my brain? What, what do I want to program my brain to think? If I could keep repeating this with intention, with presence, and 
I would begin to install the neural hardware in my brain, keep practicing it. The hardware becomes a software program and that's a new voice in your head that says, Fritzy, anything is possible. Then if you said, okay, how am I going to be with all those people that are in my wing or all the people that I hang out with? What would greatness look like today? What did Nelson Mandela teach us? What did Martin Luther King teach us? What did Gandhi teach us? What did Wallace teach us? What did Joan of Arc teach us? What, what does greatness look like? What, did, what are great people in history? What did they do that overcame any circumstance in their life? Let me review that. Let me study that because that would be the raw materials for me to build a new mind. And if you closed your eyes and you rehearsed in your mind what you were gonna do that day, you would reach a point where you were so present that the brain would not know the difference between the real life experience that's creating that circuitry and what you were imagining by thought alone. Your brain would look like you already did it. Keep practicing it, the hardware becomes a software program and you install the circuitry so that you can behave equal to your intention. So then the last part is, can I teach my body emotionally what this future life would look like before it happened? That means you can't wait for the change to feel joy. You can't wait for the healing to feel gratitude. You gotta teach your body the feeling before it happens. If you keep cultivating that feeling, it'll begin to become familiar to you. If you keep reviewing your behaviors and practicing and rehearsing, it'll begin to become familiar to you. Keep firing and wiring those thoughts, become new thoughts that are familiar to you. So the biological change is unlearning and relearning. It's breaking the habit of the old self and reinventing the new self. It's pruning synaptic connections and sprouting new connections. It's unfiring and unwiring, refiring and rewiring, deprogramming and reprogramming, or losing your mind and creating a new one or unmemorizing emotions that have been stored in the body, then reconditioning the body to a new mind and to a new emotion. And it turns out, whether you're a prisoner, whether you're a CEO of a company, whether you're a single mother with three children, whether you repair washing machines for a living, whether you're a psychotherapist, whether you're a nurse, it doesn't matter. The same model works for everybody. And that new personality then is thinking differently is acting differently and feeling differently, we have no idea what kind of possibilities that could show up as a result of personal transformation and change. And so many times, the first change that happens is aside from a change in well-being, there's a huge change in body's health. We've seen cancers and diabetes and lupus and rheumatoid arthritis and rare genetic disorders, uh, anxiety, depression, that never changed with any model of uh, healthcare, all of a sudden disappear. And you say to the person, where is that disease? And they'll say, oh, it's in the old person. I'm somebody else, it just doesn't belong there. And, and so I, I think that we have to lay down the very thing we used our whole life to get what we want for something greater to occur. And that takes practice and repetition. Um, but I think it's a healthy thing to start.